Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And thank you so much for joining us. This is Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And we love bringing you the latest information in the world of natural living right here on the Voice of Nassau Community College, WHPC. And thank you again so much for joining us. We have a wonderful guest for you today, and her name is Regina LaSalle. And Regina, at a young age, was diagnosed with autoimmune disorders, which she triumphed with many wellness hurdles. Now she is sharing her awareness and the more esoteric revelations she's discovered after decades of focused research and personal care. She has a BFA in interior design and an MFA in architectural lighting. Interesting. Rita designs for both visual and non-visual aspects of architectural lighting to support our well-being through inner physiology and outer physical comfort within each space. While working as a lighting designer and CEU educator, researching the topic of light and health grew into a beloved hobby. This practice literally changed her life. Using her background in marketing and communications for a state regional planning council, Regina focuses her efforts in light wellness towards educating communities and business owners about the benefits of infusing health-driven lighting strategies into their daily lifestyle and the fabric of local businesses. You can find Regina at lightvitalitygroup.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, Regina. Thank you so much for having me, Ellen. It's such a pleasure to be able to share with you and, uh, and all of your listeners. Well, let's go back in time a little bit and talk about the health challenge that actually led you to your life's work. Yes. Um, when I was a young girl, about 9 to 10 years old, um, I was uh, playing outside with one of my friends and um, started to experiencing some swelling in my hand, and it was very painful. So I, when I went home, my mother tried to, you know, she put my hand down on the table and she tried to press it down all the way flat with one finger, and the pain was just excruciating, and I started screaming. Um, and she knew immediately that that something was wrong. So we went to the doctor and uh, found out that I had, was being diagnosed with JRA or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Um, it's an inflammatory disease that attacks your autoimmune system. And uh, over the next few months, uh, the JRA traveled from joint to joint, uh, elbows, knees, shoulders, ankles, fingers. Um, eventually it wound up settling in my hips. And um, I was told that if it had made its way to my spine, uh, I could potentially never walk again. So um, being an active little girl and um, being very athletic and roughhousing with uh, my siblings, that was uh, devastating news. And at the time, I wasn't able to take um, many medications because a lot of the medications that were geared for these types of autoimmune conditions um, were for adults and the doses were far too high. So I wound up having to just take ibuprofen. Um, and then I started looking at uh, holistic remedies um, such as nutrition and, and different forms of exercise in order to um, help take better care of myself when uh, pharmaceuticals kind of do the job. So you were on a mission to feel better. That was the main thing you were interested in. Definitely. Um, you know, the prospect of not walking again and um, not having a means to really tame the illness was uh, something that was unfathomable and very scary. Um, and I wanted more than anything to just find a way to be able to uh, find some sort of um, some sort of relief and, and a means to alleviate the pain and um, kind of keep the, the disease at bay. 
Now, one of the really sad things I find that, that if people were to look in my book called Arthritis, the Alternative Medicine Definitive Guide, they would find that there is so much evidence-based, science-based therapies for juvenile arthritis as well as rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. And it is so well documented in mainstream medical literature that it really is something your physician should have been able to start you on immediately. Perhaps. Um, he definitely was uh, less known. I'm not sure if it was because of um, the town that I grew up in um, or the time, you know, that I, I wound up being diagnosed. Um, they honestly had no idea why uh, this was happening. And I wasn't the only case. There were um, a few dozen children who had wound up being diagnosed with the same condition over the course of, um, you know, two to four weeks. And so the only uh, the only thing they really thought was that it could potentially have been airborne or in some way um, passed along, you know, through some sort of viral or bacterial infection um, in water or in sharing of food, uh, you know, touching each other in some way. Um, so there was there wasn't a lot to go on at the time, and um, it was very scary. But yeah, they, there's definitely been a lot of advancements since then. I mean, this was over two decades ago, so. I'm not sure how far the research has come, um, but I do know that uh, they are they they now think that this um, was not in fact a full on central nervous system condition um, that it was actually a symptom of a viral infection that I wound up contracting called Epstein Barr virus, um, and, and so I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of Epstein Barr virus or EBV. Of course, and I, I am sorry to report that even if a young child or an adult should come down at this point, at this very point in time in this year, with one of these illnesses, they are still not offered the kind of things that are so well documented that I'm talking about, like changes in diet and lifestyle and specific herbs that have a very low incidence of adverse effects. But I'd like you to know, listeners, that you are listening to Herbally Yours and the voice of Nassau Community. College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my interesting guest today is Regina LaSalle, and she's going to talk to us about healing with light and healthy light, and she is now sharing her story. You can find her at lightvitalitygroup.org. So you continued struggling along, and when did some opening come about for you? Um, it, you know, I started researching at the time the internet was um, becoming a thing, and so I was able to start researching outside of libraries and outside of books and in looking and surfing the World Wide Web. Um, and any time I had some sort of interaction, um, I started looking at holistic remedies, primarily nutrition, and I was always that weird kid that loved my fruits and vegetables. I was very in tune with my body body and my energy and um, became aware at a very young age at how certain foods interacted with my body. Um, so I started doing research and looking at foods that had anti-inflammatory agents, um, foods that were enriched in specific vitamins and minerals that were going uh, to support my body in a way that um, kind of normal, healthy bodies that didn't have autoimmune conditions uh, couldn't. And so... With that, um, I, nutrition became very much a stronghold for me uh, to be able to take care. Um, and now, as an adult, um, you know, merging into even more research, because I have become a very avid researcher by nature, I've not only discovered that there are foods that can um, support, you know, with anti-inflammatory agents and that can help uh, increase blood flow or, you know, um, one one of the more new, kind of esoteric nutritional um, pieces of information that I've discovered is, is that there are foods that can help support uh, your circadian rhythm, and um, you know they do that in a variety of ways through either helping support the production of melatonin. Well, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Mm-hmm. <laughs> wait! 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 Wait a minute, Regina. You and I both know what circadian rhythm is, but before. 
before we talk about it, let's define it, because there might be listeners who don't rhythm. Absolutely. Um, circadian rhythms are physiological processes that run on approximately a 24-hour um, cycle driven by our internal circadian clock. Um, they've been widely observed in humans, plants, animals, fungi, and even bacteria. And they can be measured and modified through external cues such as sunlight and temperature. Now, virtually every organism that's been studied demonstrates a day-to-night difference in activity that's immediated by an androgynous timekeeping system, more commonly we refer to as our internal clock. Um, now, these circadian, circadian actually it comes from the term, the Latin term circa, meaning around, and diem, meaning day. And as mentioned before, it's set to around a 24-hour period or uh, a 24.2-hour period to be precise. And daylight runs on a 24-hour period. So... There's about 0.2 hours or 15 minutes of every day um, that our circadian rhythm needs uh, light, uh, its main active agent, in order to help balance it. And I like to look at circadian rhythms kind of like the director of our body. Just like a major organization or a professional athletic team needs a director or a coach, our circadian rhythms need a director. They need, um, our bodies need our circadian and rhythm in order to kind of guide and direct all of these very intricately designed uh, biofunctions in our body that help play vital roles in supporting each other. That makes sense. Now, um, how, how does light influence the circadian rhythm since light is your specialty? Yeah, um, so it's actually, uh, it's very interesting. Um, we in the lighting research community have discovered that a small portion of the blue-green ge- blue spectrum of natural white light can suppress our melatonin response. Now, melatonin is our body's natural sleep hormone, and it releases itself into the body over approximately a two- to three-hour period prior to falling asleep. Um, now, in order to kind of better understand how light affects the body, um, it's important to understand the inherent nature of light. And there are a lot of different wavelengths um, that you can find in white light that range between um, red and and violet. I'm sure all of us have seen a rainbow before, and that that's you know basically kind of the fracturing of light. Um, and so when we mix all of those colors together, we create a white light. And sometimes we can see white light and it looks a little bit more amber in color, like a an incandescent bulb, um, or it can be almost a little bit more green or blue in color, kind of like some of the um, fluorescence that you see in diners or in offices. Now, this is because the radiant output of those wavelengths of either, you know, red or green or blue are higher than the radiant output of others. And when we apply a radiance to each of those wavelengths in a visible white white light source, um, we can begin to chart them with a spectral distribution. Now, our eyes specifically, the way that this works with our bodies is that our eyes have a very special type of photoreceptor that was primarily discovered and really began being researched um, full-fledged in the early 90s. It's called an IPRGC. And I'm not going to get too technical with it, but basically it's an intrinsically photosensitive photoreceptor, whereas our traditional photoreceptors, rods and cones, um, we have the biofunction of the input is light, the output is sight. With an IPRGC, the input is light and the output are these physiological responses which govern our circadian system. Um, And there's a neural pathway that connects between our eye to the suprachiasmatic nucleus in our brain and um, that then sends a signal to our pineal gland which is very um, critical to our endocrine system and the pineal gland is where melatonin is produced and released. So when we receive this... Probably have people... 
Yeah, I have, have heard of that in terms of melatonin is well promoted for uh, helping with sleep. Well, we're going to take a little break here and then we'll continue. And you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at ncc.edu backslash WHPC or on iHeartRadio. For more information, 